Hey, remember that time Ray Liotta basically played Scarface? Yeah, he voiced protagonist Tommy Versetti in Grand Theft Auto by City. Accidents happen, get lost. A game I spent way too much time playing as a young, impressionable teenager. So as I sit in my jail cell and think on my many, many crimes, I figure I might as well list some of my favorite celebrity cameos from across the GTA universe. Let's get cracking. It's almost yard time. You two, off your asses. Let's go. Let's start off with Will Forte, because uh, he's McGruber, and that's just science. He plays Martin Sirius in The Lost and the Damned, which is an expansion for GTA 4 and follows the exploits of Johnny Klebitz, the head of the Lost MC's Liberty City chapter. So basically GTA with a motorcycle, which pretty sweet. Anyway, Martin Sirius is a shock jock radio host a la Howard Stern and even has a show name to match. His is the Martin Sirius Show, which, uh, yep, that's, that's how you do that. That's right, Lisa, this is extreme radio, extreme! Another modern comedy titan, The Righteous Gemstone's very own Danny McBride. Them just some fellas I play car pranks with. Played Dwayne Earl in GTA 5, wherein he also appears on the radio to give insight to, um, animal husbandry. You guys dropped acid, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Big yikes. Not sure how much more I can say before our advertiser's ears perk up. Uh, his segment takes place on Blaine County Radio and is entitled <sighs> Beyond Insemination. Okay, let's move on. I'm Dwayne Earl, and this is my Blaine County. There are a few entries on this list I'm compelled to include, despite the fact that they're not so much cameos as they are supporting and even central characters. But either which way, I have to talk about the villainous officer Frank Tenpenny in GTA San Andreas, played by the OG BAMFer himself, Samuel L. Jackson. He's the big bad in the game, which among its huge innovations and legendary controversies, also sports one hell of a voice cast, topped off by this epic casting decision. Tenpenny is a cop, of course, and being a cop in GTA, with a major effect on the story, he's also corrupt as all hell and uses his power to enrich himself through the gangs he's supposed to be stopping. And I do it all again! Officer Tenpenny's partner is Officer Eddie Pulaski, who was voiced by Chris Penn, another Tarantino favorite who most famously co-starred in Reservoir Dogs as Nice Guy Eddie. He's your standard issue little man with power archetype with a mouth to match, and which gets him a swift kick in the head by our protagonist Carl Johnson after an expletive-laden last request. Yeah, can I have your sister? As long as we're talking about actors who have appeared in Tarantino movies, something I wasn't expecting with this list, but also completely unsurprised about, I gotta bring up Danny Trejo, who plays Umberto Robina in Vice City. Yeah, whatever you're into, man. Hey, I'm into men. Men proving themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yes, he's never been directed by Tarantino, but he was in From Dusk Till Dawn. Best in Mexico. And in a fake trailer in Grindhouse, so I'm counting this tenuous connection made for the sake of a lame segue. Anywho, Umberto Rubina, who also appears in the expansion Vice City Stories, is the leader of a Cuban street gang who hires Tommy to destroy a drug factory owned by a rival gang. He later gives Vice City Stories protagonist Victor Vance his first mission. You look like you got some Cuban in you, lady. Frank Vincent is probably one of those guys you recognize in just about every gangster movie in existence without actually knowing his name. Unless you do, in which case, um, awesome. He was a great actor. Anyway, Frank played Don Salvatore in three GTA games, GTA 3, San Andreas, and Liberty City Stories. As you might expect, he's a mafia Don and is killed by protagonist Claude at the end of GTA 3, which of course, chronologically, comes after San Andreas and Liberty City Stories, so like, it makes sense. He's not a zombie mobster, despite how awesome that would be. The inside is covered in brains. Dane Cook, stand-up comedian and co-star of my favorite failed franchise attempt, Mr. Brooks, lent his voice to GTA 5, wherein he calls into Truth Seeker Radio and rants about his memory foam mattress and its ability to remember everything. I got one of those memory foam beds. I think it's listening. Which, hey, we've already got Deathbed the Bed That Eats, so I'm game for a cerebral mattress thriller if you guys are. Suicide Squad actress and uh, interpretive dancer Cara Delevingne has her own radio show in GTA 5, playing the DJ for Nonstop Pop FM, 
which might come as a surprise to many since she's far more energetic than is typical of her popular big screen roles. Looking at you, Valerian. Oh, and it turns out that in addition to being in games and ads for games, as was the case for her sorta of Call of Duty appearance, she's also an avid gamer and has participated in a Rockstar-sponsored live stream for GTA V. It means staring into the middle distance and acting like you're constipated. Even her in-game character is a gamer, often espousing her love for the fictional video game Righteous Slaughter 7. Who doesn't love some rampant commercialism? Back to the world of San Andreas, rapper Ice-T shows up in the game as Mad Dog, who is, in a massive break from reality, a rapper. I'm the best rapper in the universe! I'll jump! I'll jump! When the story picks up, Mad Dog is already super successful, but comes into a bit of trouble thanks to some unhelpful murder on the part of Carl Johnson, who kills Mad Dog's manager as a means of helping another rapper's career. In a moment of beautiful irony and classic GTA storytelling, Johnson winds up as Mad Dog's manager. Last we checked, his career was still chugging along. Another famous rapper, The Game, also shows up in San Andreas. No surprise, since rap and hip-hop are core to the game's storyline. Beat Up is only around for two missions and is perhaps best remembered as the total douchebag who keeps poor drug addict and member of the Grove Street family's Big Bear captive and forces him to do chores around the house. Eventually, Big Bear has had enough and, well, he, uh, beats up Beat Up. Shoot him! Taking a brief turn away from musicians, perhaps my personal favorite celebrity cameo is that of Twin Peaks and Showgirl star Kyle MacLachlan, who shows up in GTA 3, Vice City, and Liberty City Stories. He plays Donald Love, the appropriately named founder and CEO of Love Media, as well as mayoral candidate and, most memorably, a cannibal. Yep, dude's the ultimate hedonist, and his preferred delicacy is good old long pig. Dude would probably make fast friends with Leatherface. It tastes just like chicken, but somehow more, er, uh, sentient. McLaughlin's Blue Velvet co-star and Hollywood icon Dennis Hopper lent his vocal talents to Vice City as adult film director Steve Scott, who of course most notably directed such inter-global studios hits as Bite and Closer Encounters. Oh boy, those advertisers are biting at my heels again. Uh, let's move on from this one. Honey, can you please keep the Andacon in the shot? He costs more per hour than you do. Hopper's Easy Rider co-star Peter Fonda also snagged a small role in a GTA game, in this case as The Truth in San Andreas. The Truth is a conspiracy-loving hippie type who grows Mary Jane and just seems to live life according to his own bleary-eyed terms. He also might be the most memorably goofy side character in San Andreas, with most of his missions having to do either with that sticky green or UFO-focused conspiracies, which, now that I'm thinking about it, makes it a crying shame he doesn't show up in GTA V to take part in all those Mount Chiliad theories. He also gets to utilize two great modes of transportation, his painted van The Mothership and a swanky jetpack courtesy of Carl Johnson completing the Black Project mission and stealing it from a government facility called, of course, Area 69. Oh, and if Carl is too chonky when you attempt Black Project, well, uh... <laughs> but you gotta lose some of that ballast first, badass. Back to musicians, Guns N' Roses' very own Axl Rose plays Tommy the Nightmare Smith in San Andreas. Tommy is, shock of shocks, a rock and roll musician and host of classic rock station KDST. And in GTA V, it's mentioned that he died after drowning in his own vomit. Now's probably the time to mention for all the newbies out there that these are not family-friendly games. You know what I mean? And if not, you're probably an asshole. And swinging right back around to the stars of classic American cinema, the bandit himself, Burt Reynolds, voiced Avery Carrington in Vice City. He's introduced to Tommy by Ken Rosenberg, who we'll get to in just a bit, and owns Avery Construction. A clean thinker. I like that. He also has a massive influence on Donald Love, which I guess doesn't speak too kindly toward his many pearls of wisdom. Love would later have Carrington killed, and as is his way, eats the body. Charming. Trying to be funny, kid? <laughs> Lethal Weapon Batty and generally strange dude Gary Busey has his own part to play in both Vice City and Vice City stories. You Phil Cassidy? Why? A one-armed alcoholic weapons dealer, Cassidy is very helpful in supplying our criminal empire-building protagonist with heavy artillery and explosives. 
Well, I guess he's not one-armed the entire time, but he does make a whoopsie by standing too close to a bomb, resulting in his disfigurement. Well, then you know everything. Kiflom. Fred Melamed is another one of those that-guy actors who you may remember from WandaVision, in which he plays Vision's boss, Arthur Hart, as well as a menagerie of other appearances, including the Coen brothers' A Serious Man and the ultra-gory horror western Bone Tomahawk. In GTA V, he plays Chris Formage, the leader of the Epsilon program cult, which may or may not be, uh, uh, let's say, a loose parody of Scientology. He also gets some radio time in San Andreas, in which he claims to have been birthed from two eggs laid by twins. What? Now. Are you ready to write the tract? Kifla. Rock icon Debbie Harry of Blondie fame plays, of all things, a cab dispatcher in Vice City by the name of Doris. She provides several missions through Kaufman Cabs after Tommy purchases the business, and she's the first to coin the name the Versetti family, after Tommy insists that he's not part of any gang. Very Bruce Campbell in Spider-Man energy. No trouble, happy? Stand-up comedian and noted Alvin and the Chipmunks cast member David Cross plays two roles in the GTA universe. He's DJ Zachary in Grand Theft Auto Online, but more notably portrays electronics expert Zero in San Andreas. Carl, he came back and humiliated me. He's a bit of a screw-up and winds up being a bit of a liability in the end, and is responsible for Supply Lines, one of the most outrageously difficult missions in the game. In less inspired casting, star of the UK version of The Office, Ricky Gervais, plays himself in GTA 4, wherein he performs a pretty funny set at the Split Sides Comedy Club. Thanks very much. Good night. Cat Williams also provides some laughs as himself, and in general, it's pretty cool to just go watch some digitized comedians do their thing. One day. Hey, it's scumbag lawyer Ken Rosenberg. I said we'd get back to this guy. He's represented everyone from Avery Carrington to Sonny Ferrelli, who was voiced by noted not on this list, but still technically a celebrity, Tom Sizemore. Rosenberg is voiced by William Fichtner. Oh, jeez, I'm gonna need new pants. If you don't know who William Fichtner is, you probably remember him best as the shotgun-toting bank manager in The Dark Knight, which is a reference to his similar role in Michael Mann's Heat. He also has a part in Catherine Bigelow's underrated cyberpunk masterpiece Strange Days, which I only bring up because I'm legally obligated to as a total Strange Days stan. I did not go to law school for this. Noted portrayer of slimy scumbags James Woods plays undercover government agent Mike Torino in San Andreas, where he primarily acts as an incredibly punchable employer for Carl, whose brother's imprisonment he leverages to get what he wants, including dispatching of enemy agents and other pretty high clearance kind of missions. Eventually, despite being none too trusting of our hero, he does wind up appreciating and even trusting Carl, and winds up a man true to his word. And in his last mission for Carl... So what was that little job you was talking about, Torino? I just want you to go pick up your brother. Get out of here. Here's a genre of celebrity we haven't sampled yet. Fashion designer. Carl Lagerfeld, best known for looking like Carl Lagerfeld, plays himself in Grand Theft Auto 4. Carl is the host of the disco radio station K109 The Studio. I, I wish I could dive more into this one, but disco was never my preferred driving around and murdering innocents music. You made it. It's afternoon. Now, die somewhere, please. One I do remember, admittedly partly because it's the most recent game, is Lee Scratch Perry's role as the DJ for the Blue Ark in GTA 5. Life is green. Anything not green is not life. Scratch is one of the biggest reggae producers and musicians of all time, having been extremely influential on the genre and having worked with such notable acts as Bob Marley and the Wailers and the Beastie Boys. In game, he even plays several of his own songs. And it's pretty rad. And finally, to round things out, I have to mention one of my personal favorites, Stooges rock and roller Iggy Pop, who also plays a DJ, this time for the GTA 4 station Liberty Rock Radio. And Iggy himself is ripe for vulgar rants about anything and everything, including music itself and his less than favorable opinion of his corporate overlords. Please make it quick. Spare me any more of this pain. Extremely entertaining station if you ever find yourself playing GTA 4 again. Me, I'm all about that Vice City. 
Man, it'd be really cool if they let us play video games in prison. While I was double checking all my references for this video, I noticed one name that I'd actually totally forgotten, Juliette Lewis. The star of Natural Born Killers also shows up in GTA 4, wherein she plays a radio DJ and even has one of her real-life band songs included in the soundtrack. That's also really rad. 